Hello, my friends. Let's get an audio check real quick. Hey, Lewis. Lewis, I left you a message, but I, I guess you went and didn't go back and see it or didn't get a notification uh, about being a moderator. Trying to make sure it wasn't going to step on J Dreamer's toes. Choppy, you say my, my audio is choppy? Everybody else says it's good. All right. Hello, Crystal. Shaman, you look good with that blue wrench. I got some mods in here. There's Christine. All right. I got some guys for mods, but I guess they're just too cool for that. I already know who that is. That's Jake. That's Jay Hart. Jay Hart sent me some t-shirts, some books, some good books, too. Well, he was ready. I was, uh, well, I have the Zoom page, and I'm looking at Google, and I noticed that Google Google has a, shows that there is, a, there is something in Zoom where you can go into the advanced settings, and there's a YouTube uh, link where you can take a live session, uh, uh, a meeting in Zoom, and just post it to YouTube. Well, well, I thought it was going to be easy. Yeah, they don't make it easy. Yeah, it took forever for me to figure out just how to get Gary Gary on with me live so we could talk about how to get on YouTube. So, yeah, I, I got frustrated. Like I told Gary, it's 2022. Technology should be user-friendly. Anything that's not user-friendly by now is all. Uh, they need to delete that, come up with something else. Hell, they have apps now that you can download that... You don't even have to write code anymore. You can design software. All you have to do is describe to the app what you're trying to do. There is absolutely no sound in my studio. I don't know what you're talking. There's no AC running. There's nothing. It's not. It's not raining here. Everybody says my audio is good, but one person. So yeah, I'm a. I'm a I got to download some type of other software. I thought Zoom was enough, but apparently it's not. If I want to bring people live on, on YouTube, I, I would prefer to do it live. You guys know I, I'd rather go live than sit there and try to prepare stuff and do uploads and all that. But I will. But I will. All right, we have 256 people on. You know, I'm not really big on intros. 256 people and 340 likes. How did that happen? 
appreciate it. If there's any more, if there's any more phantoms out there liking it, go ahead and smash that like button some more. Let's see how we get that above the, the people that are actually watching. That's an anomaly. Scott Sampson restarted his YouTube and it sounds fine now. Good. Good. I got some pretty good reception tonight. Got some good re re reception. Oh, I got my first question. It might not be the first, but the first one I've seen. Brock Fam Chan are the Dragon Kings from the time before the pole shift when the pole star was Drew. Oh, when the pole star was Drew, was Draconis. Man, I like the way I like it when people hit me with questions showing me that they've been paying attention to the material. Yes. The Chinese, the Chinese Dragon Kings. Uh, the Chinese are basically telling us the exact same story that we found on a Sumerian prism that we have translated today as the Sumerian king list. Now, you guys already know, those of you who have been watching my channel, you already know, the 400, and, the, excuse me, the 241,200 shars or sky turnings of the Sumerian prism is only 670 years. Because under the draconian system, the dr which, which which basically the draconian calendar was Alpha Draconis was the eye of the dragon, and the whole dragon turned a three hundred and sixty degree circle, covering one third of the circumpolar stars. The tail of the dragon, the tail of the dragon was like an ancient clock before the flood when we had the vapor canopy. And they would watch because the eye of the dragon never moved. It was the pole star. The, and Alpha Draconis was the eye of the dragon. And it stayed still while the tail of the dragon moved around. And one turning of the tail of the dragon was how the ancients kept time. And it's how all the ancient calendars were, were created. From the Sanskrit, the Vedic, the Quiche, the, Tol the Olmec, the Maya, later and later on, uh, the Hindu. These were all not, I mean, the Hindu kind of messed things up. They got some really profound material, but when it comes to the ages, the, the, this, they've, yeah, I don't even want to get into what they, uh, one, yeah, that's crazy. 432 million. It's crazy. They got out of control with adding zeros to all the, all those time periods. But uh, same thing the Egypt, Egyptians did. They added one zero to all of them, or maybe the Egyptians didn't do that. Maybe it was, Maybe it was Herodotus. Maybe it was Solon. Maybe it was Plato. You know, maybe it was or Diodorus Siculus. Uh, it might not have been the Egyptians who have been the Greeks in, in uh, when they were trying systems had added a zero. Somebody added a zero, but uh, to all those uh, that many times. But the Dragon Kings was 646 years. This is in Chinese traditions. There was a 646 year period before the collapse of the Dragon Kings dynasty. And the only reason they called them dragons is because China has a motif that is very unique to its people. And that was, was that a advanced race had ruled over them and they were bearded. And this is why Chinese traditional dragons are always shown with hair coming from their chin, which is very unusual because dragons are reptiles. And the Chinese people are not known for facial hair. Uh, now, over the period, over the passage of millennia, there's been some intermarrying with Mongols or uh, with Khans, with the uh, 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 Tartars. There's been all kinds of intermarriage, so so facial hair is not is not uh, an anomaly anymore. But they still don't grow the 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 great beards of of Caucasian people. So, uh the dragon kings were that they were they were just bearded foreigners that were ruling over them and the 646 years of that dynasty ended with a flood well the fall of the dragon in chinese it was the fing and uh so yeah it's just a retelling of the exact same story it's a pre pole shift narrative but the china the china well i mean i don't know if you guys have seen it i posted it on i posted a chart on facebook like a couple years ago in the archaics group 
the chart is phenomenal. It was actually drawn over a hundred years ago. I can't remember what book I got it at, but it should be still on Facebook. But it shows the original Chinese pictographs from the third and second millennium BC, next to the Proto-Sumerian, next to the pro, next to the the uh, pre the the uh, what is it? I can't even remember. It's before linear A, before the Egyptian hieroglyphs, but it showed all of them, and they're very similar to each other. So it's not surprising to find that all these different cultures on continents apart are telling the same stories when when we the, the links is, is almost similar. So why not the actual symbols that they use to convey information? They're very similar too. the further back we go in time. So, yeah, it's there's a lot of evidence that there was, uh, if not contact between the ancient Chinese people and the Sumerians, they were at one time the same people. And that, that's that's also a very common uh, deal. So anyway, I just want to let y'all know that Gary Warmerdam and I are going to get into it. We got some things to reveal about 1890. I don't even know what Gary has. I haven't asked him. You guys know that that's not my MO. I don't I don't really want to know. Uh, I tell I tell people to interview me all the time that uh, look, man, we're not going to do a pre a pre show. I'm not. I'm not I, listen, we're going to shoot from the hip. Whatever questions you have, I don't want to know in advance what they are. Simple as that. It's a, I have to be genuine in, in my responses. And if you catch me flat footed, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know, hey, man, you know what? You're really asking something that's beyond the perimeters of, of my abilities to, to answer. But uh, like with Gary, he surprised me last time, told me some things about 1902 that I had not found. And I thought I was a pretty good researcher. Uh, led me into some, I, I, I've I followed through that, that research. So I don't know what Gary has for 1890. I don't know. But, uh, I looked at 1890. Uh, I have notes from 1890 that that I know no one else has because uh, a lot of the material that I publish is not found on the internet. So uh, some of the notes that I have are pretty pretty interesting, gleaned from different books. Uh, events that really started in 1877, uh, from 1877 to 1890 is pr pretty unusual period. Uh, but the 12 years from 1890 to 1902, and you guys already know I'm not going to beat you up in 1902, but I've already got five videos out on it and a lot of mentions. So in other videos, little other things that were discovered and thrown out there. But that 12 year period from 1890 to 1902 is very telling. And I promise you, I am going to reveal something in that video with Gary that you've never heard before. Is something I recently put together after assessing all the evidence, but uh, it's a very I, I'm I'm getting a much clearer picture of what happened in 1902 and why it happened the way it did. I said it's uh, two separate groups at work and they're working against each other, and that 12 year period was very very telling for what each group was doing, and. Uh, one was preparing and one was taking advantage of the fact that the other group was no longer around. This is very telling. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till Gary and I tomorrow do that video. I can't promise it's gonna be live. I'm having some technical difficulties. I don't, I don't, I thought, I thought Zoom was, it was, it was a simple, I bought the Zoom package thinking it was just simple to, to go live. It's not. Apparently I have to get OBS or Streamline or some, some other, I have to get some type of other, other software installed on my computer in order to do Zoom on YouTube. I don't know. I got to research all this tonight. So that's what I'll be doing tonight, trying to figure all this out. But uh, anyway, 368 people. Come on, man. 3,423 likes. Does that mean there's a lot more people listening to me and YouTube just hasn't put them on the live stream yet? The, the, the numbers don't show how many people are actually listening? I don't know. In my analytics, I see all the time that YouTube sends me notices that the analytics are not in real time. I'm going to have to give it a little while to for it to catch up. But I don't know if y'all are seeing the same thing I am, but I'm looking at 3,465 likes, but only 391 people on, on board. So that tells me the analytics for how many people are actually listening have not caught up or they're not tabulating. Anyway, this is a freestyle Q&A. It was totally unanticipated. I had no plans to do this because I'm supposed to be running my mouth with Gary Warmerdam, but we're going to do that tomorrow. So... You guys have the floor right now. I said, let the inquisition begin. And I meant that. 
get those questions out. I just answered one of them. I got a whole video on the Dragon Kings. I'll, the person that asked that question, I don't know if you know that or not, but I do have a video about the Dragon Kings and the relationship to the Sumerian King List. 2012 Sky Sounds. Do you think they're connected to the superstructures? I don't know. I don't know. I do. I, I am familiar with skyquakes. Uh, they very well could be because um, I, when I tell you guys that, that, our world is not what you think. That is with the heavy implication that our sky isn't anything that you think it is. I have read reports and I will find them. I, my studio is packed full of notes. Listen, I will find the report. I believe it came out of Our Haunted Planet by Jacques Vallée. I, I think, but I'll find it. I have reports from the U.S. military of a B-52 bomber that was that was that was basically it hit something in the sky but it never saw it the damage done to the to the b52 the it, it it's as if it hit a force field and it just pancaked against it the wreckage they believable it had no yield to it as the great compartments of the sky are inaccessible because it looks like open air and clouds and it's not Everybody on that B-52 died. That's not the only account. Yeah, you're, you're not going to read none. Of, and no modern books are talking about none of this. Because you got to read Ivar Zapp. You got to read Jacques Vallée. You got to read some of the citations. Definitely some of the books by uh, that that are cited by David Hatcher Childress. You, you got to go. Man, they stopped really reporting all this by by the 1980s. So it's a uh, there are so many things about our sky are anomalous. Let me tell you another report that I read. This also, I think, came from Our Haunted Planet by Jacques Vallée. Um, U.S. military had a had a non-military mission. It was done, not during wartime, and they're flying over the Pacific or Indonesia. I want to say the Pacific or Indonesia, somewhere Indian, Indian Ocean. Or, I can't remember. But the aircraft sent out some maydays military military maydays and and the aircraft finally landed on on in in an undesignated area like a chain of islands that it wasn't supposed to land on so they went to the wreckage and the and the plane was still pretty much preserved but everybody was dead they didn't die from the aircraft falling the outside of the plane had claw marks in the metal the inside of the plane, it looked like something with sharp claws had scraped the interior of the plane as it was chopping people in pieces. Our world is not what you think. That is not normal. For it to be hidden was probably mandatory. You can't report something like that on the news. What are you going to tell people? Hey, this is TWA flight such and such, such and such. We're leaving San Diego, uh, uh, heading out toward New Zealand. Oh, and uh, uh, this is a at this is at your own risk flight. We have reports of a Tasmanian devil at fourteen thousand feet. Come on, you can't report that. You cannot report anything like that. It's going to send shockwaves through the entire industry and the world. So these uh, these are things I should do videos on these. I need to pull those notes out and look at all that material. It's all uh, like I said, man. The sky. Skyquakes, I don't know what they are. I don't have the answers for everything. I just know that about 90% of all the natural phenomena for which we've been given scientific descriptions for is bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's, uh, it's uh, our world. Our world is almost the opposite of what the establishment tells us over and over and over. It's just not. It's not true. Okay. You mean in the morning or right now? Because I thought if I in the morning it was perfect for Australia. I don't know. I really need to get back with uh Campbell. I need to get back with Campbell. He and I need to do another video pretty soon. Maybe we can find some more common ground. Because I'm on board. I'm on board with with you know Campbell doesn't have uh and I, I'm not saying that I do either. He doesn't have all the answers, and he doesn't have a lot of answers, and I don't either. But 
I like Campbell because he's basically putting the right questions out there. I mean, there are inexplicable architecture all around that doesn't fit the historical narrative that we've been given. I get that 100%. It's a, uh, I just don't feel like I have a, I have the time nor the responsibility to go to other channels and assess all their data and, and, and try to fit it into my paradigm and try to fit it into the Phoenix chronology. Uh, I don't feel a need to do that. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it will. There's no, there's, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that it will. So let me look at some of these. I don't want to pass up some questions today. You know, your questions need to be in all capitals. Jason, no, you do not have an Alexa. Alexa AI Google. I don't have an Alexa. I I tell you what I got. I got a piece of crap. I paid a thousand dollars for this for this Galaxy FE. It's called an FE F20e. This is an Android F20e. Oh, they hyped it up at the at the T-Mobile store. They hyped it up. Told me all kinds of things. Let me tell you something. This phone's so terrible. I paid another thousand dollars for a tablet. I can't stand this phone doesn't do anything that I want to do. So anyway, having said all that, let's see. Let me look at some, let me look at some, uh, you guys got, I know you guys got some questions in there. Somebody said OBS. OBS is good. Okay. Kimchi. OBS is good. Kimchi, you and I have bounced emails back and forth. I just can't remember your name or if I've only ever known you as Kimchi. Don't remember. Tim Baker, Jason, if people reincarnate and return to this simulacrum, then why does the world population keep soaring? Okay, how do I know that your question doesn't have a false premise? I don't know that the world population is soaring. I don't. I know that I'm told that there's over a billion people in China. I'm told that there's over a billion people in India. And yes, there's a lot of people there. But I live in Texas. And there's a lot of people here too. But I also know from the archaeological record that what we're told in the historical narratives doesn't match what we find in the archaeological record. In the archaeological record, we have civilizations pancaked on top of civilizations buried in red earth and red mud, pancaked underneath newer civilizations that didn't have a clue that the prior civilizations had met such a catastrophe. We have that all over North America. If you're living in one of the 48 states of continental United States today, you are living 60 to 200 feet above an ancient ancient infrastructure that was absolutely buried in a cataclysm. Thousands of cities all here. When Pompeii and Herculaneum met their end in 79 AD, when Mount Vesuvius blew up, that explosion sent hundreds of trillions of tons of pumice and ash into the atmosphere in the air. Much of the heavier materials rained down within an hour of the explosion. Burying alive two cities, Herculaneum, Herculaneum and Pompeii. The famous Pliny the Elder, who is the author of natural history and one of my personal heroes, and somebody who has even mentioned the Phoenix phenomenon without ever saying Phoenix. Pliny the Elder received, received information from some mariners that, hey, such and such, that, that woman you like, she's of noble blood. Since such and such a uh, 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 Pompeii is uh, or Herculaneum is in dire dire distress, and she's at the wharf, and she needs some help and all that, and uh, didn't think anything about it. Pliny the Elder took him and his household, and they got in a ship, and they went to she, he went to go find his friend. We've never seen him since. In the historical records, it ends with Mount Vesuvius. Other Roman writers of the time said that Pliny met his end in the, in the destruction of the volcano because it lasted for days. The reason I'm telling you about that is because when the Etruscans built settlements on Vesuvius that were later overrun and through, through uh, uh, basically intermarrying by Ro the, the, the Latins, which you know of as the Romans, they had no idea by the time that Herculaneum and Pompeii were thriving metropolises, they had no idea that just below their feet 
or thriving metropolises that have been buried alive in the Avellino eruption, which was in 1687 BC, and it's very well scientifically documented. It's nothing I'm making up. This happens all over the world, all throughout. I don't know if it's satellites or if it's halo drones, but we have high altitude imagery of what the, the jungles in the forest, in the tropical forest look like in Mexico, in Veracruz, Oaxia, all throughout Central America and, and, and the northern parts of South America. Do you know what we find? We find cities going in multiple hundreds of thousands of square miles everywhere with canals and road works. You can't see any of this from the ground, but you can see it in the photography. You, they know about it through the subsurface interface radar, aerial archaeology. They can see the shadows and then they develop the, the photo negatives. This is we have civilizations pancaked on top of civilizations. We can go back 17 centuries to the days of Arnobius, and we can read the writings of Arnobius as Arnobius was alive. And we will read a catalog of all the civilizations and all the resets and all. This was 17 centuries ago. This man had already concluded in his own writings that the world is nothing but a place where earthquakes and cataclysms bury civilizations on top of civilizations. So when you tell me about the world being overpopulated, I don't see it. I drive through Texas for hours and never see another car. I just, I know that there is so much empty land all over the United States. Yes, there's a lot of people here. There may be 350 million people here. But the geographical land masses are so vast that it's not popular, overpopulated anywhere, except where people highly concentrate themselves in the cities. But I also know that the properties of our existence basically mirror a reflective hologram. hologram. And, if, and because I, I have accepted this to be true, that means that the information that I'm given may not be true. I am a single, I am just a single point of awareness, a singularity, and I cannot view 360 degrees around me all up and down and, and, and basically and basically absorb all the true information that's out there. My central nervous system will never allow me. It's a filter. So when you say that, I'm not denigrating you, but when you say that, that's a hell of a premise that there's more people alive today than there was in ancient times. I don't know. I do know that that in World War I and World War II, massive depopulations happened because it didn't just happen on the battlefields. If you know your history, you know that the United States of America and the UK performed one of the most godless, inhumane acts of, of war crimes the world has ever known. And they did it against the German people at Dresden. If you don't know what happened to the people of Dresden, initiated by the United States and, and the UK, you really don't know your history. You, you're, you're, you're probably stuck in the, in the collective version, the version that was written for you about World War II. But yes, what happened to those people, the firestorm that those people in, endured, specifically created, calculated, scientific, the way they dropped those bombs and the way they employed physics to do it, to create the largest fiery tornado the world has ever seen. Babies, toddlers, youth, old and old women, old men, that wasn't against a military target. It was against civilians, and it was intended. Now, before I get all dark on you about talking about the Civil War, one of my passions and one of the things I probably should never do a video on, it's, uh, let's move on. But, uh, yeah, I just don't, I just know that every time there's a catastrophe, every time there's, uh, um, may, like, like I said, in World War II, there was a lot of people being exterminated, and it wasn't on the battlefield. It was other things going on. China, yeah, China exterminated uh, uh, Cambodia. Yeah, genocide was going going off everywhere. Hardly ever reported. The world, the, the, the Red Cross was worried about going to detention facilities and hyping up charges against the German people instead of going to the death camps in Cambodia or going, going, going into the, mur uh, the, the, the murder cities uh, of China. Yeah, it's crazy. You seen that movie, The Purge? If you think that hasn't already happened, you don't know history. That's yeah, uh, yeah, it's crazy.
Oh, wow, I wasn't even paying attention. I don't mean to leave y'all out. I did not even pay attention to the top. Thank you for your donations, guys. I'm uh, really appreciate that. I think those are stickers. I'm still trying to catch up on all these things. I activated a lot of stuff, and I'm still I'm still deactivating YouTube's ability to put ads in the middle of my videos. I won't allow that. So uh, I've already done over 200 videos. I've deactivated that, but I still got to go in my settings to over 100 videos, my earliest videos, and deactivate that. I don't mind them putting some ads in the beginning and I don't mind them putting them at the end, but not in the middle of my videos. People don't, people don't come to get educated at archaics to get spammed with all kinds of crap. They don't want to buy. Let's see. OBS is good. Okay. Yeah. Well, the, uh, baby booms, baby booms after all these, after all these genocides and all these wars and all these natural catastrophes that kill a lot of people. First thing that happens is a baby boom. It's almost as if the souls are being recycled right back in. And the false premise that I'm talking about is that we're told there's over 700, there's 7 billion people in the world, but you don't know that. You don't know that and you can't convince me of that. There's no way you, you can provide any data set. You can't Google or go to Wikipedia and tell me anything at all. And like I said, I'm not talking to you personally. Everybody knows has been on my channel long enough. You know that I will not take Google as a source of information. I can't. I can't. That doesn't mean that all the books and all the reports that I've read are true. No, it doesn't mean that. It, but it, but it does mean that uh, I filter my data. I, yeah, yeah. It's uh, the internet was not. I was. I had no access to the internet when I was in prison. When I was developing all all my all my my data points and data sets, I had not, I didn't have access to the internet. The internet developed while I was in prison. <coughs> I didn't get out till till twenty sixteen. By 2016, the internet the internet was basically exactly as it is today. It's fully developed, but but yeah, when I when I started doing all these when I started doing all my research, yeah, the internet didn't have these these thousands and tens of thousands of old books from the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century. Nobody started uploading those PDFs until they realized they could start making money doing that, putting them in, on in different deals. And some people did it for. Uh, uh, um, basically humanitarian uh, efforts, but that didn't start to like 2003, 2004, 2005. And then they're still uploading books. But yeah, in 2016, I used to Google, I used to Google things when I got out of prison, get, get on my dad's computer. I was happy about being free, but I didn't want to go anywhere. I want to learn stuff. So I, I got on Google and I wanted to Google all these. I did Google all these old authors and books for which I could not find in prison, but I found in the bibliographies of the books I did find. So I'm, I'm hunting them down and looking for them. I couldn't find anything. Now, here it is 2022 and people are sending me emails on a daily basis showing me PDFs of books that have been uploaded to the internet that for which I, I spent... A half a lifetime searching for they weren't on the internet three and four years ago but somebody's out there doing some good they're uploading hundreds maybe thousands of these old books and pd uh, pdfs which is absolutely if you don't know this it's absolutely illegal there are people who have copyrights on these books and uh, and i will tell you now Every one of my books has been found on some of these pirate websites my publisher has sent me a list of websites that have uh Matter of fact, that was like three years ago he sent me that list. I'm pretty sure my books can be found on, on other ones now. But there are many pirate websites out there that give you free PDFs of people's books. And you know what? Maybe that's humanitarian. I don't know. But uh yeah, you can get all you can probably get all my books for free. You search you search long enough, you'll find somebody who put a PDF of it up somewhere. All right. Let's get some more uh, questions in here. Okay, this is ridiculous. Is it ridiculous? Have you guys ever seen anything like this? I have 11,779 likes, but only 741 people watching. Is this because the notification of this live video went out to all my subscribers and they just go ahead and like it real quick, but they're not really watching it till later? Hmm. I'm going to the bottom of the thread to see if anybody can answer that. Then I'll go back up and answer some more questions. Buddha girl, you said yes. Stellar Shriner, there's a whole bunch of them. All you have to do is Google that. All you have to do is Google that.
Well, I did. I'm going to tell you guys. Man, I, it might not be wrong. Let me explain. I got a notification. I got a notification from YouTube this morning. When I looked in my YouTube studio, it said, "Congratulations, your channel has received two million views." So, uh, underneath that notification, it said, "Because of." viewer oh viewer retention because people are watching my videos for a lot longer periods than what's av what's what's normal for for uh i guess other channels they said that uh the notification i got from youtube is what they're sh that youtube is now suggesting my channel to to a lot a wider demographic a lot a lot more people i got that notification this morning i didn't even think about it. i've been so busy all day i didn't even think about it but i did screenshot that and it did say I did screenshot it. It did say say congratulation. You're uh Oh, I also got a notification from GoDaddy. My website archaics.com. I got a notification that says uh um uh, it was congratulations too. I'm going to screenshot it. I'll show it to y'all if y'all want to see it. But it said I'm in the top 1% of all the websites on GoDaddy. And it showed me the analytics. It was like, I don't know, it's crazy. 48,000 48, views on my website in like a, some amount of days or something. I can't remember. I got to look. I don't really pay attention to all that type of stuff, but I need to. I need, I need to do that. Okay. So that's done. That's done. I'm not a braggart, guys. You guys know that. I just, those are things that popped up this morning. I thought it was pretty good. Good. Jay Hart, I like your little cartoon. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Jay's been a staunch supporter. And besides, she sent me an awesome Tampa baseball t-shirt. It's like my favorite motorcycle shirt now. It's so comfortable. I don't have I got a lot of black shirts and, and I got a few white ones, but I don't like wearing them outside because they get real sweaty and uh Texas is so hot. You see all my tattoos when I'm on a motorcycle. When I'm sweating, if I wear a, uh, uh, a white T-shirt, you can see all my tattoos all over my my back and my front. I'm like, you know what? I'm not trying to go. I'm not trying to flag going around flagging all over Texas in the daytime. I'm not trying to do all that. Just, but the gray shirts. Oh yeah, the gray and the black shirts. Uh, when it's hot outside, it doesn't do that. And she sent me a real nice thick uh, gray Tampa baseball shirt. That's like to, I like to wear that when I'm on my bike. Let's see. Okay, darkness 1984. Give all the people in the world one cubic meter, and they and they fit all in two provinces in the Netherlands. Yeah, I've heard some similar. I've I've heard some similar uh, deals like that. Yeah, the world is a big place. It's a big place. It's a big place. Let's see. Yeah, you guys know what I'm. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about with Dresden. We don't. We don't need to talk about it no more. We got some real good books that already revealed all that stuff. But uh, you, Chronicons, one of them. You guys, some of these things that I talk about that I don't want to go into detail with on YouTube, they're in Chronicon. So, yeah, and and, and if you want to go into real detail, I, I. I hate saying these things on live, not because I'm worried about the censorship, because I never want to come across as that guy trying to sell you stuff. You understand? I do have a publisher, and he probably gets a little frustrated with me because I don't I don't really push things. But my published books, I've made them as cheap as possible. And my publisher and I, we've had some odds, and I released four books without him. I, I released them myself on, on, on Amazon. And, and now he and I are really getting along and he's about to start publishing a lot of my material. I'm about to release a lot of my material in very easily digestible 50 and 55 page paperback booklets. That's what I'm about to do. So people can absorb this information. One, one book is one sit down. Here's a whole bunch of data points that form one data set. Here's a book. Here's something you could loan to your, have your son read. Here's something that 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 you can loan uh, to a friend. Uh, 
instead of overwhelming people with some of these big books that I've written, or Chronicon's huge, but you guys don't even realize how big Chronicon is. Some of you do, because there's been several of you who ordered my thumb drive on the Super Pack. Only the people that ordered the Super Pack know what I'm talking about. So much unpublished notes. Chronicon is big. But there's even more in the Super Pack. The Super Pack has more data than Chronicon does. That's why that's why I told you guys when I'm finished, Chronicon's going to be three volumes, each one about a thousand pages each. The final edited version is going to be this big. It's huge. It's going to be in a steel case, leather bound, weather fire resistant, and it's not really for us. It's for those who those who are still here after 2040. That's who it's for. And but the Super Pack. Thumb drive, it has all this stuff that I'm talking about. I go into great detail on what what these people, the be bewitchery all throughout the last 2,500 years, every civilization that's had things to say about them, what they've done, what they're guilty of, and what they've actually boasted about, what they have actually said in public because they no longer fear retribution. Yeah, it's all. I got all that in there. Moment of silence for Dresden. Jason, I sent you purple light sky footage on Facebook. Please check your Facebook messenger. Okay, I'm back on Facebook again, but I only showed up for one night. I got a new email, new Facebook deal. I'm I'm still ticked off that, that I, I spent a lot of time putting my Facebook profile together. A lot of personal pictures from my life. All that's on my original Facebook. Uh, I'm not doing that no more. I set up one single little profile picture. I'm on back on Facebook. I'm back in to do some admin. I have to shake up that archaics group a little bit because uh, I, I need to I need to un unleash a bunch of new material in that group. I just got to slow down, and it's going to happen. I've been telling you guys over and over that I need to catch up. I need to do this. I'm about to get heavy back into predictions. I'm about to he get heavy back into posting in Facebook again. I'm going to get a routine, two different hours of the day where I'll be doing lives, not on the same day. But I but I want to I want to maximize the ability for people all around to to be able to to participate. So I'll on one on one day you will all know that this is the exact time I'll be live. On the next day it will be live, but it'll be a totally different time. We got different hemispheres to deal to to deal with. So we need to uh uh. I need to take that into consideration. But the reason I know that I'm about to have a lot more free time to do anything is because today I hired somebody. It is basically the first Archaics employee. And uh and uh I took them to to the mail to the post office today, showed them exactly because it's been taking a lot of my time dealing with packages, uploading thumb drives, getting the getting the, the address labels back, but but nothing is more exhausting than dealing with customs and uh uh deal so now i have somebody to do that for me and i just pay them and that that frees up a lot of my time to do the things i need to do so so let's get back to some questions mm. jason do you think we get to choose our avatars i'm sorry just me but you're asking me a question i, I you are asking me what i think okay i get that I don't know. I don't know. I, I I don't know if we get to choose our avatars. I do believe that we that we volunteered for this exper experience, but I don't know if we knew the full perimeters of what we were volunteering for. I don't know that. I don't know that. I believe that we volunteered for a certain scenario and that there was a bait and switch involved. But I'm 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 kind of of the opinion that the bait and switch was part of the plan because it adds an element of of uh, urgency, believability. Because the one thing that anybody running a simulation wouldn't want the, the subjects to realize is that they're in a simulation. Once they make that realization in the collective, it's over with. All the output is corrupted. You have to basically reset it. Let's see. Purple light sky. Somebody's asking me to talk about the rap. Well, I'm not a all. Uh, that's really iffy because it seems to me that one point 
at one point, religious scribes were of the opinion that those who were taken were taken to a very terrible place. Those who were left behind were the ones that were blessed. The meek shall inherit the earth, all that. Uh, two women will be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Two men will be out chopping wood. One shall be taken and the other left. Is there any indication in those prophecies that the, one, the woman that was taken was evil? Or the man that was in the forest uh, had, had done something bad? Is there, is, there, is there any explanation as to the difference between the two women? No, there's not. So it's almost, it's almost as if something is, has discretionary power to take those it wants to take. And, uh, and, and the connotation is negative. Now, over the passage of 15 centuries, interpretations change. And the rapture seems to, with Hal Lindsey, and uh, prior to Hal Lindsey, I don't see a strong rapture cult in, in the United States. I don't remember. I remember reading all the commentaries of Finnish Jennings Degg and Spirals at Hyades. I've read, I've read all the commentaries from uh, the IV Bible post-1902, the old, yeah, there's so many different biblical commentaries. Uh, one of the one of the the most informative pieces of of uh, encyclopedic information you could ever read about biblical history is called Cruden's Concordance, not Strong's Concordance. Cruden's Concordance is far deeper, and uh, I read that. I read that cover to cover and multiple times. They used to publish Cruden's Concordance in in very old Bibles in the back. Then it, then it became a book all by itself, and that's what I had. When I was in prison, I had a copy of Cruden's Concordance. Uh, also, uh, another very, very good source of information for biblical material that's very in-depth is called Smith's Bible Dictionary. And uh, it, it, too, goes back to the 1890s, early 19th, uh, 20th century. So, yeah, there's so many good good sources about it, but rapture is not a source in the old. It's not it's not a very old source. It seems to be a reinterpretation of something that was initially described as bad that has been turned into something else now, because some of the passages involving rapture seem to be referring to resurrection. But I'm not I'm not I'm not on board with the rapture deal. Uh. I do see evidence of whole entire populations vanishing, especially in 1212, the Children's Crusade. Uh, in 1212, it was very bizarre. That was the period of time that there were stories being told of the Pied Piper of Hamlin. And that, too, was nothing but more, more, more. It wasn't more than a tradition that had been changed from the original historical details, because it does derive from some historical details. Unfortunately, those details are very dark. And what I mean is, is we have stories from ancient Europe of a stranger appearing in villages and leading the children away in their playtimes, and uh, never found again. And, um. The Children's Crusade was very unique because it happened in the year 1212, which happened to be a Phoenix year. And uh, it was a year that Phoenix appeared. And Phoenix is known for the vanishing of, of populations. Not, not just populations, but uh, human architecture. They, uh, the the Bannock Burn, gigantic ship in the Great Lakes in an area so shallow, there is no way they could not find that ship today. Every bit of the Great Great Lakes has been surveyed. They know where all the shipwrecks are, but it's absolutely impossible what happened in 1902 to the Bannock Burn. The Bannock Burn was in full view of another ship, and it was entered into that ship, ship Captain Dog, that strange lights appeared in the sky among the clouds. And right before their eyes, the Bannock Burn, which had like hundreds of thousands of tons of wheat and barley going to Europe was in the Great Lakes, and it just vanished. Search parties couldn't find anything. Modern scientific equipment can't find anything in there. And we've sent scientific equipment down, down Loch Ness. Loch Ness is deep. Great Lakes are not. So anyway, yeah, we have all kinds of anomalies with Phoenix. Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix makes things disappear, and that includes people, men and materials. So, okay, 
I don't know how to pronounce your name, but you're going by Orin Zariel. Will enough positivity halt this millicrum? No. I'm sorry. Uh, man, I get this from you. I get, I get this from you guys so much. There are so many people that try to tell me that uh, they can't wrap their head around conclusions and data because they think that and have conditioned to believe, and this is many of you listening to my voice, that if enough of us come together, we all vibrate positively, and we all and, and we all have this, we are the one, and, and we start projecting nothing but good and positive and, and, and initiate our own golden age. I do not believe that at all. At all. I believe that we will knit for us a closed system within the holography. We will be insulated against all the negativity that we're, that we're not taking into consideration, that we're refusing to participate in. I do not believe that we can change the world. I have shown through Chronicon, and for those of you who haven't read it, you just don't know. All these mathematical patterns, they show that the history is fixed. The events are written in stone. They are fixed. This is a template that we may have lived through multiple times. It's a template. Imagine a vast library full of crystal tablets. When a, when a custodian pulls that tablet out, it's veined in hundreds of Billions of tiny microscopic gold veins. It's circuitry inside of crystal. These are tablets. Takes that, that custodian takes that tablet and goes and inserts it in a wall. And on the other side of the wall, looking through a screen, are about 6,000 participants, all in a giant room with other custodians, making sure that all their vital signs are okay. And they're all unconscious. And as soon as that tablet gets shoved into that, that interface, all 6,000 of those people are living through a construct and they're living multiple life sims going through all this. And while they're in it, they believe it's all real. They're in a real universe and they, are, and they believe because they have this ego that is in ego it's ego programming that's instilled within them that makes them refuse to believe all sorts of things that are actually true and yeah it's our world is not what you think and we're just living through life sims and there is no better description than to tell you that all the world is a stage. But if you want to put it into more modern perspective, this is a VR this is a VR game. This is a virtual reality game that we are playing. And I know many of you have some pretty terrible shitty lives and it's hard for you to see past that. But you haven't had a life as near as bad as I lived. I promise you that. There may be some of you, but not a lot. Not a lot of you. 26 years in prison didn't go by smoothly. For me to be able to convey these things to you now is miraculous. But it's because I have embraced the fact that none of this shit is real. And when you embrace the fact that all of this is a make-believe, you will start doing incredible things. You will survive things you're not supposed to survive. But in retrospect, you'll think back and say, it's no big deal that I survived it because there was no threat to you from the beginning. This, this world, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But we have to divorce ourselves from all these little micro attachments that we have allowed culture, society, religionists, and our parents to instill upon us. Absolute falsehoods that have nothing to do with the real reality. I don't know. I don't even know what question prompted all that. I'm sorry, guys. Let's see. I have no idea. <clears throat> okay, could our spouses and children be NPCs? That's another question I get often. I'm going to say, in most cases, no. And I'm going to, I'm going to, quant I'm about to qualify that, that answer. It's not something I just freestyled. That's an educated answer. So let me define an educated answer for you. I could have said anything in response to that that would have made that would have made sense or or some of you might have agreed with, but I have to keep my answers 
in line with the data that I've accepted to be true. And I have already shared with you guys that I have read reports by, by specialists who have done reincarnation type research and they have actually documented children who have remembered significant events about very local families as if they were an elder when they were having when they were experiencing these things. But because of the children's frame of reference is different than, than the, the thinking of an of an elderly who was about to die, these things are difficult to understand sometimes. But the child remembers everything about a family that lives two blocks away. And often there's a blood connection between, between the child that remembers and the other family. So if that's true, and I have to accept that into my paradigm with, with, with everything else that I believe, because I can't compartmentalize my beliefs, they all have to be cohesive. Everything must fit in its place. If I'm going to accept that to be true, then my answer to this individual must be that, yes, you, you probably are in the simulation with loved ones, may, maybe not family, but maybe there is no family outside the simulacrum and that we are all immortal beings and that we're related because we were basically created at the exact same time, making us all brothers and sisters in spirit. I don't know. I, I'm not out there anymore. I'm in here with you. So I don't know. But my answer has to comport with my belief system. And my belief system is, yes, man, if kids, if kids are showing evidence that, they're, that they have been reincarnated recently from the, the elderly that just died in that family over there, and this kid knows things about that family that he, he shouldn't know about, then yes, there's transmigration of souls. And that soul and that, and that avatar died and reappeared right over here. And if that happened one time, remember, I have, I have, a, I have an interpretive tenet that I live by. If I can show... If I can show if any one thing is true, then it's all true. If, if, we, if I can show if just one spirit did one thing, then we all can. Yeah, I can't. That's, that's, that's how my mind works. I'm, I'm going to keep things as simple as possible and as logical as possible because there's no need for uh, these metaphysical, uh, drifty interpretations to reality. We don't need them. We have enough data to put everything together logically. Let's see, I hope that answered your question. I don't know who Noble Drew is. Ollie and the Moors. I've read some Moorish histories. Yeah, back in the 80s, I remember, yeah, Indigo Dragon. Well, that sounds like a type of weed. Back in the 80s, I remember being told that China had over a billion people. Yeah, if they had that many in the 80s, how come they don't have two billion today? Earthkeeper, thank you for not using Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, I can't take any data from the internet. I do Google things to see, you know, basically uh, out of general interest to see uh, uh, what, what something says, but you will never hear me cite it as a source. I can't do that. Can't do that at all. Din Soul, welcome to have you. I haven't seen the Edgar Casey flood map. Am I, am a watchman? I haven't. I do know that Edgar Casey nailed it on concerning the Great Pyramid and the year 1998. Other than that, I really don't know about Edgar Casey because I'm not interested in anything. I read a I read a book by John White called Pole Shift, and it's a very good book. I recommend it to anybody. But uh. It's from A.R.E. Press, uh, the, the same publisher that puts out Edgar Casey's material. I read that book like 16, 17 years ago. It's called uh, it's Simple Name, Pole Shift is the name of the title, John White. In that book, I read about what Edgar Casey said in one of his readings when he was hypnotized. And he had mentioned that uh, 1998 was the key year to understanding the last days and the key year to understanding the unfoldment of the ancient information that lies hidden within the Great Pyramid. And that's exactly what my channel is about. I have an entire playlist that shows you what the Great Pyramid is about. I have another playlist my predictions playlist that shows you what Edgar Casey meant by the year 1998 and how it is the epicentral year to decode everything that's going to unfold in the last days. And I show this over and over and over. 
1998 is the epicentral year. There's other ones that you can use to, to verify the magnitude of events, like 1962 and 1902, 1973. There's other epicentral years, but 1998 is the year. It is 108 years after 1890, and it is 108 years before 2106, the 6,000th year uh, in the Phoenix chronology. Anis Mundi. All right, let's see, Jason. Oh, that's the same one again. I send you purple light. I send you purple light sky footage. I'll look at it. What, what do you want me to see about it, though? I mean, purple light? The sky? Nothing at the sky surprises me, guys. Nothing. You can send me a thousand pictures. I will never sit here and say, hey, man, I'll, I, I mean, I'll, I'll appreciate it, and I'll thank you, but I'll, you're never going to surprise me, ever. You know, I mean, Bert and Ernie could fall out the sky. And they could they could have the media there reporting it, showing showing Burton Ernie's body parts all over the ground. You know, it wouldn't even surprise me. Because I already know that sky is not what you think. One of the things that really profoundly affected me was reading a book from the 70s about about what a what a municipal pilot in a Cessna saw. His description has haunted me for years. He describes when he left Florida and he was flying flying to Bermuda. He was in the Bermuda Triangle. And unlike a lot of other stories, his instruments didn't start messing up and all that. He just had the feeling that something wasn't right. And he's in a little single prop Cessna flying up in the clouds. And it dawned on him that all these clouds are moving, but there's no movement over here. And, there's, and in his peripheral, there's a cloud there. So he just looked. And when he looked, the entire sky where a cloud was supposed to be looked like it was malfunctioning. It, the sky had stopped looking like a 3D cloud and now, look, and now took on a checkerboard form that was corkscrewing. Like he could just fly into it. Like it was a tunnel. It scared the hell out of him, so he turned away from it. But the more he tried to get away from it, the bigger it got behind him, and a yellow fog started encompassing him, but he made it out of the yellow fog. But he said he felt very, very weird. Well, to me, he's describing like a trans-dimensional envelope. To me, he's describing when two different mathematical holographies operating on totally different uh, systems basically coalesce. Watch my fingers now. Two independent mathematical architectures. Look what's happening on the, in between my fingers. Here's one. Here's the other. So what do we have in the middle? In the middle, we have a third field. We have a synthesis between two different systems. If something gets caught in that in that area, they're no longer moored to the to the holography that they were in. So when those systems pull apart, there's a chance that that individual ship, that individual boat, that indi that individual plane is going to go into the other arithmetic and it won't remain here anymore. Bermuda Triangle and the Devil's Triangle off the Sea of Japan. They're very similar in nature. Too many disappearances. Like I tell you guys all the time, too many coincidences exhibits no coincidence at all. Tree lover, 1976. That's a good question. If Phoenix targets low and bad vibrations, what about the children? Are they innocent? Okay, children are innocent. Children are innocent. There's no doubt. But uh, as someone has said recently in one of my other videos, it's, uh, it's also understood that when we're dealing with widespread ubiquitous phenomena, there's always collateral damage. And with the oversoul actually in charge, I mean, children die today. We don't have, it didn't have to be a Phoenix event. Every single day that we are alive, multiple children are killed unnecessarily. So, uh, yeah, I, that's not a really good answer to your question, but I do have to bring it into perspective that, yes, I believe Phoenix targets frequency, 
but it may not be something as simple as just negative frequency or positive frequency. Because what are those really? I believe it's more specific. I believe it's targeting something more specific. It's a, it's retarding. Listen, you're going to understand better what, what Phoenix is doing when, when Gary and I do this video tomorrow about the 1890s, because I'm telling you now, I, I don't want to give too much away, but there's a whole group of people in this world that Phoenix does not target. It benefits them. And I don't understand. I don't understand why, but, uh, uh, but yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix is something else. I don't have all the answers. I don't. I mean, I do have the chronology, and I'm willing to back it up and do it all the time. But as far as what ex exactly is happening, it's a mystery. I do know this. The elite hide from it every time. They run. They run. And I've heard some really interesting theories from some of my subscribers. Because like I said, I don't have all the answers. But some of my subscribers get really, really inventive with their theories. And I can't say they're wrong. But I've heard some pretty good ones lately uh, about what could be what you know, about the elite hiding and it's just a uh, Phoenix. Phoenix can very well target bloodlines. There's no doubt. It's a, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say, I don't want to say more because what I'm willing to stand behind is my chronological material, which is so backed up by sources. I'm not uh, that I feel no threat in where I'm really kind of hesitant in is trying to basically tell you exactly what it's doing. I know it's doing mud floods. I know it's depositing red earth, red mud all over the world. And I know that many times, and this is so weird. This is so weird because I haven't wanted to focus on this, but it's verifiable. It is so weird. Phoenix, the Phoenix red, red rains, red mud, red earth. Multiple times in 1902, scientists analyzed that material, and it was blood, and it was organic tissue. It was organic material. This is harrowing, because I've already told you guys that Phoenix causes mass human disappearances. But at the same time, we have this, this scenario that is straight out of an H.G. Wells book. You guys know what I'm talking about. I have never really wanted to go because it's so horrific. It's so horrific. I don't want to talk about that that type. The, the movie The Night of the Comet was telling us something. Do you remember what, what happened to the people? Red dust was all that remained. Thousands of people partying in the street. And when that object appeared in the sky, everybody was reduced to red dust. In the in the H.G. Wells War of the Worlds, what do the aliens do? They hit you with a weapon that turns you into, in, in basically the whole land, into, into red blood. Vaporizes you, but it cannibalizes, cannibalizes people and basically spits them back out as red material, red, red blood, red dirt. I'm not making this up. Charles Fort has, has, has published this and so have others that scientists have analyzed the material that fell from the sky in 1902. And it was often 65 to 85% organic material. Scientists in Italy found that red rain had blood in it. Now, I'm, I'm not making any of that up. I don't need to. But, uh, yeah, so it, it's pretty harrowing. Now, do I feel I have anything to fear? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I am not going to prepare for the Phoenix. I am not going to prepare for it. I'll be 67 years old. Uh, I am 49 years old right now. I'm in excellent physical condition. And I don't believe that's going to change in between now and me being 67 years old. Uh, I'm going to stay physically active. Uh, I'm going to take care of myself. And 67 in this day and age is not that old. So uh, I'll be okay. I have zero medical conditions. So I believe that I'm, I'll be fine. But I also believe that I'm, I'm meant to survive it. But that's not why I will survive it. I will survive it. I will survive it because it has everything to do with the fact that I'm just not on that frequency. The acquisition of information has put me on another plateau to where I'm not vibrating on that fear frequency anymore. The things that I have accepted to be true have added to the armor that is my informed field. My informed field insulates me from all these little things, man, that the collective experience that I do not. 
Yeah, I don't have to worry about income. I don't have to worry about, am I going to be able to put food on the table? I don't have to worry about none of these things because right when I need things in life, they're given to me. So I don't have to worry about that. And as long as I am living the life of not worrying about the things that I need, need to get, what I need to get manifests in my life. So yeah, there's no better way to put it. I'm not going to prepare for a negative because all I'm doing is in, is empowering my informed field to get ready to suffer that negative. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. It's not going to happen. And I hope a whole bunch of a whole I hope a whole bunch of you guys don't do that as well. 12,000 likes. Wow. YouTube wasn't kidding. I told you all I got that notification this morning. Because I hit I hit 2 million views and because I hit a some type, some type of watch watch through rate or something. I can't remember what it was because I hit that tier or whatever. YouTube starting today was gonna show my videos to a lot more people, a wider demographic, a lot more people. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Maybe it has something to do with all these likes. Okay. AJ Fortuna is the Great Pyramid a good thing if it destroys the Phoenix? Because it seems like the Phoenix is a good thing getting rid of evil. This is a good point. Now, the Phoenix phenomenon was was occurring before the Great Pyramid was ever built. And uh, those of you who go look at all the chronographical material uh, uh, in the world before the flood in my Chronicon, you will see all this laid out. How the Phoenix started first, how the Phoenix was initiated to keep the Archons in check, how the Phoenix was to control and make sure that the high ones that are on high didn't get too high, didn't get out of control. So basically the Phoenix was implemented by a benefactor because it was to govern over the very forces that tried to rule over men, mankind. So the Phoenix was first. However, however, the Great Pyramid did two things. Prior to the building of the Great Pyramid, there was no faith. There was no eschatology. There was no belief system about the return of the chief cornerstone to set order among the earth. It was just chaos. The rulers in the vapor canopy and even before the vapor canopy were the seven kings. The seven great ones ruled before the vapor canopy. When they established their rule at Bad Tabira and Shurapak in the Sumerian Pentopolis, that was the fulfillment to ancient prophecies. Listen, guys, this cycle is coming back. They were already predicted to come during the vapor canopy from a civilization that had maintained prophecies from even before. Remember, I've told you guys, we have evidence of a 930-year-old civilization that met a catastrophic end. It met an end. But some of those faiths, belief systems, knowledge, and technologies bled, bled out into the world of Genesis, the vapor canopy world. Those matured after a while, but became in different forms, and there was, there was belief systems about the return of the seven kings, and they did. They fulfilled prophecy. There was a, now, the world was going to be destroyed. It's going to be the flood. Somebody has this gigantic prophecy, a 41-story high building built in, in, in Egypt. And it has, and it contains all these motifs and ideas. One hundred and forty-four thousand white, gleaming, one hundred inch, inch thick, super smooth casing stones with the joints so tight that a razor blade couldn't fit within them. They were machined. They were godlike in construction. We can't build that today. Those faced the interior 2.5 million, 2 million blocks of the Great Pyramid. But every one of those uncountable blocks in the Great Pyramid actually represented a men. M-E-N, ancient, ancient Egyptian. Men mean, meant soul. 
every single one of those blocks represents a soul of the redeemed, the errant, the elect, the chosen, the faithful, the meek who will inherit the earth. It represents every one of them. The casing blocks, the 144,000 casing blocks, were the final volunteers who would volunteer to willingly put their avatars through the apocalypse with the living dead. Now, that's, that's, that's in the future from us, though, because we have a return of the seven kings. They're coming back. They'll be back in 2052. That's what, the, that's what the prophecy of the Statue of Liberty is about. And I've revealed that in other videos. I should do a video about it. But uh, the Statue of Liberty has a certain amount of steps, exact amount of steps. And it was erected in a very certain year for a reason, because those steps is an annual countdown all the way to the point up to the church where the where the freedom, the liberty, the liberty of humankind will be taken from them in the apocalypse when the reign of the seven kings returns. And this is all in Revelations. Revelations describes the reign of the seven kings and how they will return. Now, but somebody built this monument, a prophecy of the return of the capstone, the chief cornerstone, the stone the builders rejected, who's going to set all the order back and right. He's going to make he's going to make order among the chaos. He's going to break the rule of the high ones. He's going to completely, completely imprison the archons and do away with the government of the seven kings. This monument, the Great Pyramid, built during the vapor canopy, uh, Vapor, vapor canopy contains a holographic template, and I have shown this. This is just me talking. For my new my new subscribers, if you think I'm just making up a fairy tale, you need to go watch my playlists because I have shown this in multiple different vantage points mathematically how the measurements which were scientifically conducted to the thousands of an inch in the Great Pyramid and documented all show a holographic template of the history of the world going forward and backward in time. The Great Pyramid preserves something, but the embed is the Phoenix holography every 138 years. So the Great Pyramid was built to do something to the Phoenix because the Phoenix was already in effect before the Pyramid ever appeared. Therefore, I must conclude, because the architect of the Great Pyramid was a benefactor, I must conclude that this structure must have something to do with the ending, the stopping, the Phoenix Protocol when it's no longer needed. Because the return of the chief cornerstone is to bring about a reign of peace. It is inferred in the prophecies as the stone empires of men, Babylon and Rome, were gold. This is followed, by, followed by Persia, followed by, uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Babylon. It was uh, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. Those are the four metal empires. Those four metal empires will yield. They will give away. Because in the, in the ten kings in Revelation, they're defeated. And then a stone uncut by human hands. This is the stone the builders rejected. It falls from the sky and it breaks all, all the empires of metal. And it begins the stone kingdom. This is the kingdom of the chief cornerstone. This is the benefactor. And when the chief cornerstone descends upon the monument of man and the number of the sealed is, sealed is made complete, the rest of the world's in trouble in trouble. The Phoenix holography, though, will cease after this great war is over. It's not needed no more. It has to be put to a stop. The Great Pyramid is the mechanism by which that will do it, that. Will do that. When it wants it put to a stop, then the Stone Kingdom will, will continue until the collapse of the Simulacrum, which is 72 years after the descent of the Chief Cornerstone. So, I hope that, listen, what I'm, I'm basically paraphrasing a lot of material that's, that can be found in my other writings or in my other videos. It's just a, an abbreviated answer to a very complex question. Good question, though. Good question. Okay, when, uh, uh, Mike, e, Mike L. Daniel, what if the shift in consciousness we experience today is deliberate? Okay, let's... Uh, Let's explore that question. 
what shift in consciousness? What, what exactly are you talking about? Because to be a shift in consciousness, you're implying that it's the collective that's shifting in their consciousness. And I assure you, if there are 7 billion uh, souls in this world, the truth or community isn't even 0.01% of that, of that margin. It's not. All Every single person in this world who considers themselves a seeker of the truth, a truth or an errant, uh, 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 it doesn't matter if you're, if you're Muslim, it doesn't matter if you're Hindu, if it doesn't matter if you're Farsi, if it doesn't matter if you're in Iran, listening to, to my voice right now in the candlelight with three other family, family members, it doesn't matter. If you think you're among one of the called faithful and chosen, if you are a actual divine spark of an immortal fire, that you belong to the creator, if you think you're sealed, I promise you, you're still not 0.01% of the world's population. So when you say shift of consciousness, what are you really talking about? Because I don't feel the collective around me is doing anything but slavery. I don't feel that the collective around me does anything but do what they're told to. As long as ABC, CBS, NBC, B, uh, BBC, and CNN exist, they're, as long as they're steady putting out all this, all this BS, then the collective is going to follow suit. So I don't see the shift in consciousness. I don't. I only have... Uh, Let's put things into perspective. There's, if there's 7 billion people in the world, I've only got 1,046 people listening to my voice. And by tomorrow, there might be 3,000 people who have listened to this video. No, man. Not even, not even, not even one star in the sky among all the other stars in the sky could that be mathematically equal. It's not. There's no shift in consciousness in the human race, my brother. There's not. It's not. There's a shift. There's a shift in perce perception that you're experiencing because your informed field is becoming more and more empowered by new data, new data that you resonate with. And you have, now you have to figure out why are you resonating with it with? Why? What is it about any information that you're learning on my channel that's making you resonate at a higher frequency? What is, is it because you're coming into contact with other souls who are also resonating, resonating on that frequency? Because I will say this, when singularities emit energies, those, those energies gravitor, gravitate to each other. I'm not saying gravity, so don't get triggered out there. Some of y'all get triggered when I don't talk about buoyancy and all that. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, uh, Mike, Mike L. Daniel, again, I'm not denigrating you, man. I'm not trying to talk down to you. I'm just trying, trying to explain that many of the questions that I get come with the premise that I do not agree with. Therefore, I can't give you an accurate answer to comport with what you're trying to get me to say or what you think I should say. It's a, uh, I, I don't agree with the premise behind the question. I don't believe there's a shift in consciousness going on on the magnitude that would, that would, uh, be implicit of what you're talking about. No, we're a, we're an extreme minority, and this is another reason why YouTube pretty much ignores a lot of us. We're an extreme minority. Yeah, I mean, outside the truther community, there are hundreds of millions of people enjoying YouTube, and they don't know anything about us or or, or our channels. Yeah, it's all a matter of perspective. Well, Gigi Abby Lynn. What do you really know of the Phoenix? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, but you haven't given me the benefit of the doubt. You're obviously new to my channel. 41 videos on the Phoenix are backed up by three published books and over a hundred articles that I've posted on, 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 on Facebook. It's all uh, the Phoenix material is mind blowing. And, if it wasn't, I wouldn't have much of a channel because my whole channel was predicated off that research. AJ Fortuna, I've seen your name many times. I'm glad you asked that question earlier. Higher frequencies, you might be right. Probably just the fans giving support. That's good. I don't know much about weather manipulation. I, I know the technology exists or, I, or I've read that it exists, 
But I mean, you guys have to understand. Some of y'all, some of y'all don't know. You're new to my channel, but NASA and CERN. You guys ask me questions about them, but I can't answer those questions. I can't because in my world, in my in my in my world, NASA is a tax, and so is CERN. They're not doing anything at all. NASA is all about mind manipulation. It's not about sending things up in space. If you don't know the true history of NASA and who and who and who and who actually put it all together, you have to understand what the pressures were at the time with the Kennedy administration. You've got to know your history in the in the fifties and the sixties to understand what happened in the late sixties and seventies with with NASA purporting to go to the moon. You've got to understand all the subterfuge, all the politics between the Soviet Union and the United States. When Yuri Gagarin became the first man in space and he was a Soviet, that sent Kennedy into a rage. He wasn't trying to hear it at all. And he vowed, he vowed that in his presidency, he would send a man to the moon. Now, uh, NASA was basically ordered, ordered by elitists in the U.S. government to, to, to uh, put a man on the moon to to do all that, so they had a huge, vast, vast, uh, uh, basically a, a Nazi rocket program to build these badass rockets and all that stuff, and it was all it was all a pony show. Every bit was a pony show because NASA's main agenda and their expertise, their field of expertise, was mind manipulation. So. Yeah, NASA and CERN, they're a tax. Hundreds of billions of dollars annually go to those, and they, and that money disappears into black ops groups because they're not sending anything into space. They're just shooting things up into the sky. All right, let's see. All right. Hmm, let's see. Ghost. Well, I saw the word ghost and then I lost it. My little thread just popped on me. Man, I've been running my mouth for an hour and 30 minutes. How'd that happen? I didn't even feel like I was talking that long. Lord Matthew Prerogative, private tax assessor, man. How you doing, bro? Matthew sent this to me a while back. This is a real stamp. And he had this tailor made for me. And it puts off a real Phoenix stamp. You know what? I have one right here. I have a stamp right here. Hold on. Let's do this. Matthew, this is for you. You got to press on this thing hard, though. Matthew, you must be a big guy. Because every time I use this stamp, I got to press on this thing hard. I'm 220 pounds, man. I still got to use muscle on this thing. Okay. Okay. Okay, look at that. Look at my little Phoenix seal. I can't even remember what it says. Matthew, uh, Lord Matthew, prerogative private tax assessor sent this to me. He's also sent me some pretty good research from time to time. It's, uh, yep, Jason Immortal Soul, Phoenix Ambassador. Oh, yeah, Phoenix Ambassador for 5 16 2040. That's right. Some of this, the writing is so small, I can't see it, but yeah. Yeah, it's a sticker. It's crazy. I'm going to put that back over here. Thank you, Matthew. All right. Yeah, uh, Blazin Beard, I think your live shows with other guests help, help with numbers. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I just... I don't know, man. I feel people. I feel people. And I'll be the first to tell you, man, that uh, I fall in love with personalities. And that's why I've done quite a few podcasts with people with very, very small channels, very small reach. Uh, I've come to know them by either through emails or uh, like on Facebook. I met Gary Warmerdam on Facebook like a year ago, over a year ago. And uh, it's just... Uh, yeah, it's not about. I've had, I mean, I've, I've had invitations. I've had invitations from people who who claim to have half a million. Uh, pod, I mean, I can name several podcasts 
they're not even on YouTube. Big podcasts. They, they say they got all kinds of subscribers and they're on five different platforms at the same time, streaming their lives and all that. I just, one, I don't have time to address all of them. And two, Sometimes I'll get an invitation, man, and I instantly, I'm not resonating with something they say. A lot of times it's syntax. Sometimes it's the way somebody presents themselves to me, and I'm instantly turned off. And you know what? It is what it is. But but some of them are just because I just haven't had time. I have a file. I have an email file set aside, things to do. And, it, and, and lately, because I haven't had any help, lately that things to do is just getting larger and larger and larger and larger instead of me being able to to stop, take a break, and go into that file and get things done. I keep adding to it, but hopefully now that I actually have an employee that uh, I'll be able to start catching up and, and, and getting the things done I want. Because I even have uploads. I got some deep research I want to put on. I want to put online. I don't want to just do podcasts and live videos. I got some, I got some awesome uploads. I also need to bring back to the forefront some older videos that were very poorly done and sh and they ha they have profound information and the information could be presented in a much better way. So I have, I want to do that too. Also, oh I'm also looking online right now for a camera that will attach to to my chest, my chin or my forehead. I really don't want it on my forehead, but Man, I'll, I'll get on my motorcycle and I will I will go all the way to Galveston. I will go through the country back hills. I'll go hit the interstates, go over the good giant bridges. I'll go through downtown Houston and show these massive buildings. I'll go through all the all the uh on my motorcycle and I'll go all the way to Galveston, go up and down the seawall, let y'all see everything, and then, and then I'll come back and then I'll come out and I'll I'll do a two hour video. And during the whole video, you can see everything like my like my van vlogs, but yeah. I just need to find the right camera for that. But I'll do that. Hell, I'd shoot, I'd do that in the next three days just to just to that's such a unique video footage. Yeah, for my motorcycle, I gotta have the right camera. I can't do that on a cell phone. Okay, Corso. Jason, do you think the Phoenix phenomenon is known by much of the elite? All right, my very first Phoenix video addresses that, and I've addressed that many, many times in, in subsequent presentations. I'm going to answer the, answer you that for that. Listen, yes, they know. Or the 33rd degree of Freemasonry wouldn't be a secret. If you don't know, the 32 degrees of, of Masonry are not just random symbols and degrees. The first 13 old and accepted rites of Scottish Freemasonry, and then the 14th, the 13th degree, which is the Royal Arch of Enoch, and then the 14th, the, the, the modern degrees, all the way up to the 32nd degree. Listen, this is a symbolic history of the world, of resets, of vapor canopy, of the Great Pyramid. It's all in there in the degrees and in the symbolism for the first 32 degrees. But when you look at the cover page for the 33rd degree in any book, you will not find any details about it. But the cover page for the 33rd degree, degree even in Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma from 1887, is a picture of the phoenix and nothing else. They've been knowing. Of course they know. Proof of what happened in my five videos showing you what happened in 1902, how the elite unleashed all their wealth and all their companies and all their NGOs and, and, and organizations and institutes all in 1902 and 1903. They did that because, of course, they know when they realized in 1902 that it wasn't the big one. They were safe. They knew they were safe for another 138 years. And that began a massive rat race against a whole nother people who ended up basically ruling the 20th century. Joe, Joe Kermasi, would that be Kermasi because it's one C or, or would it still be Kermachi? Kermachi. Joe? Joe, you've been a participant for a long time, man. So I, I need to know how you pronounce your name. Let's say your stuff is so intriguing and your research is impeccable. And if you are the inquisitive type, how could you not be drawn to information right, wrong, or indifferent? It's solid information. I don't understand. Oh, if you are the inquisitive type, how could you not be drawn to information right, wrong, or indifferent. It's solid information. Uh, I, 
kind of understand. I should have read your question, man, because it wasn't in caps. And now I'm kind of wondering what you're trying to convey. Hi, Jason. Do you ever use scribed in your research? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Liam Watson, you're hot. Stop it. Edgar Casey flood map again. And I'm reading incel to voice. How many times are you going to ask me that? I mean, I already answered it. I sent you purple light sky footage on Facebook, or maybe I'm just so far behind in the chat. Because that's the third time I came across that. I see. What is stopping men and women from taking back inalienable rights and letting the government know their position and it's not above men and women? That their position, okay, I don't know what's stopping them. I mean, the world has never run smoothly. Uh, humankind has never been good at self-governing because the most corrupt among them will always take power. So I don't know. I don't know what's stopping them. Uh, if you're of Iceni, is that, that's what you go by? Listen, if you're of the opinion that humankind has the ability within ourselves to come together and self-govern and do all that, then you're of the opinion of, of something that has never happened in the history of, of recorded history. It's never happened. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, it kind of, it kind of, it's kind of like a fly in the face of eschatology. It's kind of, it's kind of like, okay, if that's your, if that's your belief system, then you're basically saying that there's going to come a point in human development that we no longer need a benefactor. We no longer need a savior. We no longer need someone to rescue us. And I would have to say that flies in the face of a lot of the most ancient messages, such as the return of the chief cornerstone, who's only coming to set the captives free. He's not coming to rule. He's not coming to do none of that. He's coming to set the captives free. This is the old message. And the old message implies that we are not free. So if we are not free, but we feel free, then what kind of world are we living in? I'll just leave you with that. Thank you, KY Joy. Boy, that kills me. I bet. Appreciate the compliment. Let's see. What up, J-Dog? <laughs> are you somebody I know? Because there used to be a bunch of guys I used to hang with. That's what they called me, J-Dog. Especially, especially when we got on our bikes. Let's see. I got a mean bike. I got a big bike. What data convinced you of the informed field? Okay. First of all, I believe we live in it. I believe the entire... The entire holosphere is an informed field, but you yourself are an informed field as well. And you need to get into the research of Paul of Violet. There's a book you need to read also by, by someone who does not want to be known. Uh, it's, it's anonymous, but the book is called Liber Chaos. There's a third research, P. P. D. Alspinsky, Ishak Bintov. There's four sources right there that you would need to read to really understand the holographic nature, the, this information field that we live in. So uh, those, those were a part of my education. But what really convinces me is what your question asks. What convinces me is that I have absolutely made things happen in my life that would have never happened had I not believed that an informed field actually conveyed the very things from my spirit that I needed to manifest in my physical reality. Because that's what it is. We are spiritual alchemists. Alchemy was never about the material world. It was about bringing things out of the mental into the material. So there's no way I could have done many of the things I've done in my life had I not had this informed field, this armor of information of every single thing that I have ever come in contact with and accepted to be true. So I hope that answered your question. I can't convince you otherwise. All I can do is, te is tell you is the, the person that you're listening to today has come to this realization and basically forges his own life by, by this, by this self-realization. What you do with that information is your business. 
I like Edgar Allan Poe. Man, light a couple candles. I got these old gas lamps in here. I got oil. I mean, old oil lamps. I collect them. I got some really old ones. And uh, turn those on and read a good book. And see, I won't use this. I got this big lamp with a donut light and it's a huge magnifier. But I should do a video of me researching and just use that as the background for something I narrate because this is what I normally use at night. This, these little hooks, these little hooks go on to whatever I'm reading, to keep it stable. I, I make my adjustments and because it's necessary, because even with, even with my glasses, I can't see some of the print. That's the problem with some of these old, old books. They don't, the typeface they used in books before World War II was far smaller. They put more information in books back then than they do now. So I pull up, I pull up any, any old book, pull up any old book and I light a lamp, light my lamp, pull my magnifying glass out, give me a really old book. Like this was from like 1910, something like that. Wow, I'm good. 1910. What? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? What's that say? Oh, yeah. 1910. So, yeah. it's uh, That's what I need to do. I need to do a video showing my research. I just turn my lamps on. Give them a, give them a deal out. Give them a old book. And every once in a while, use my stamp and make me another Phoenix gold seal. <laughs> That's crazy. Somebody asked me about Easter Island. My thread's moving so fast. I have an entire playlist about the dark scriptures. You would uh, you want to know about Jesus? Go 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 listen to the videos in the playlist. Now there's there's three different types of videos in my dark scriptures. I have videos that focus on the Old Testament and tell you the identity of Yahweh. Then I have videos that are on the New Testament and they focus on Christianity. Then there's some other videos in there that focus on something far more sinister, other texts that were considered scriptures too to the people that read them. See, Soul Invictus. Let's see. I don't know what that means, so I'm not even going to read it. That's a good question, Brock. Brock Fam Chan. Brock Fam, whatever. If errants are the are an anomaly in the is this freedom, or will we also be the captives being set free? It's a good question because we are the ones going to be set free. This you're tapping into the very thing I was trying to convey to that other guy. I don't believe there's seven billion people here. Now there may be seven people, there may be seven billion avatars here. I can't contend that. We may be able to count them, but I don't know if those hundreds of millions of people that they say are living th all spread throughout China and all these little small villages and all that are all are actually real people. We don't know. Yeah, it really goes back to Schrodinger's cat. How much can we actually verify? Remember, each every each and every one of us is nothing but a singularity of perception. And we only have a very small visual field to perceive. So most, but 99.99% of our information that we believe about the world is given to us from others. We take it on faith. Tuning in from Japan, Hydro Green. Welcome, welcome, man. I like to know that I'm all over the place. 
latched on about three weeks ago. All right. I will say this. Uh, my, uh, my other website that was developed by somebody else, a subscriber, didn't charge me anything, built a fantastic GoDaddy website just so you guys could have free transcriptions of all my videos. And I thought that was thoughtful as hell. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, it, I'm, I, I'm providing the link in all my videos now. Now it's in all my videos. You can go to the transcription website. In the next two weeks, a whole lot of a lot, a lot of uh, transcripts will start in there. I have a list of a lot of your a lot of your emails. Don't think I'm ignoring them. I'm just behind. But I, every single person that volunteered to do timestamps, I'm writing you emails. Every single person that that, that that volunteered to do transcripts from different videos, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your emails. I do need your help, every single one of you. The more that are helping, the faster we can get all this done. And, and this guy has provided a website that everybody can put their material on. It's fantastic. So your timestamps are different. Uh, if you do timestamps, like Wendy Flores has already started. She's done three of three videos that I know of, or two videos, or maybe four. I don't know. She's somewhere in there. But if you do timestamps and, and catalog everything that's talked about in every video, all you have to do is send me an email and tell me you did that. I'll write your name down on Archaic Staff. I'm keeping a ledger of everybody who's contributed to Archaics. You never know. This might grow up. This might be become fantastically huge. I don't know. And in that, in in the event that that happens, then uh, believe me, I'll be more than genuine, gen, you know, generous to to share that. But you can put the timestamps in the videos yourself and send me an email. And let me know you did it. As soon as I know that a video has timestamps like that. I will I will put that in the pinned comment and remove my my own pinned comment. I'll put every single one of them in the pinned comment for everybody to see. So I think it's a great I think that was a great idea. I didn't even know anything about 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 timestamp indexes. That's fantastic. I just learned about this stuff. I've been seeing little numbers and comments and text. That just shows you how tech retarded I am. I didn't know. Tony, Tony Judicus, listen, could the old writings have been manipulated, promoted by the Masons for their agendas? Listen, I have cataloged thousands, me, uh, excuse me, tens of thousands of historical uh, statements and cataloged their sources, where they came from, who said them, what time periods and all that. And I agree. And this is the information that I have set aside and setting aside all this BS, I'm still left with enough data to put chronic con together which is huge which i've showed many of you so i agree yes much of it is is, is bs where I find value in historical research is when i find out that the establishment and scholars are in agreement that the colbrin bible is just pseudo history and i find i find that the experts claim that the book of jasher is not uh, is of no value and then I find out that the Roman Catholic Church refused to put the Book of Enoch in the canon. And in the Council of Nicaea, they entered it into the minutes. And they said, well, the Book of Enoch is just too old. It's so old, we can't really verify it. Which implies that all the other records were very new and, and not authentic. So when I find these texts about the, uh, about the Oralind manuscript, these are the ones that I find value in. So I, these are the ones I want to research. This is what I want to want to see. So when I read books like Flavius Josephus, there's a lot of accusations out about Flavius Josephus. It isn't even, isn't even an old book, but I have found that it is an old book. I don't see any evidence whatsoever that it's a recent, it's a recent development. What I see is that it was recently rewritten and key materials were, were, were altered, but, uh, it's, a yeah, Flavius Josephus basically wrote a pseudo history of, of the Jewish people for the Romans. And it's full of bullshit. And that's where the value is. You get to read it. When I read it and I study it and I and I compare it with what's really true, and I, and I see exactly what, what, what the manipulators did, like Barosus of Babylon, like Manatho of Alexandria and Egypt. Yeah, they're all full of shit. But when I read those texts, I do find value in them. It's the things that they weren't trying to sell me that that have a lot of value. It's a like it's like it's like reading it's like reading Ovid. Ovid wasn't a historian, but his 
poems and his literature is so packed with historical historical anecdotes, I find value in them. Aristophanes and the birds. We find value in many of these ancient texts and we find, okay, well, look, man, there was literacy, amphitheaters, all this stuff was going on. But yes, I have produced a video in the last three weeks or so explaining why there are so many conspiracy theories today about all these historical texts were actually recently all written. Listen, these guys are on to something, but their conclusions are in error. What's happening is that because of the Phoenix phenomenon, there are people who have secreted away whole entire databases, whole libraries of all these ancient texts preserving the, the basically the integrity of the historical record. We have too many books and too many translations from the ancient world that comport with each other. Ancient Coptic traditions that were recorded by Muslims and preserved for over 900 years unchanged should not match ancient Babylonian cuneiform tablets. They shouldn't, but they do. So we see the Nag Hammadi library has texts in it that talk about the Phoenix and what it was for and all that. And then we find out through the traditions of all these civilizations, we get these little fragments about the Fing and the Typhon and Typhonius and Set and all these things that meant Phoenix. We put all this together, putting all this together. The entire Phoenix phenomenon chronology that I put together was put together perfectly as a 138 year protocol. And it's the sources are impeccable. And yet they come from all kinds of divergent forces, di divergent sources that were basically trying to uh, argue against certain con one conspiracy after another. It's novel. It's absolutely novel. No one else has ever published this. And yet, and yet, here it is. For Here's all the sources for everybody to see. Taken from so many different time periods, different languages, different continents. So, yes, the historical records are being manipulated. But most of the Phoenix material didn't come from any of, the, any of those manipulations. It comes from the very text that scholars in the establishment are trying to convince you have no value. And I have whole videos about listing all these texts that we're told is pseudo history and bullshit. And yet when you read them, you see this 138 year protocol that goes all the way back 58 centuries. Yeah, it's too many coincidences exhibits no coincidence at all. Hey, uh, Lane, Lane, but boy, I don't know what that means, but I want to use the informed field, but I'm still confused with some parts of it. Well, you're not going to learn from this video. Now, I have other videos going into a lot of detail. Try my, try my live video on dungeon programming and some of the videos of that time period when I was just every, every time I was releasing a video, that's all we talked about. So, uh, yeah, start with dungeon programming. That's probably a, one of the better ones. Some of y'all been no better than me because when a matter becomes clear, it ceases to concern me. So uh, once I release a video, I've already mentally moved on to something else. Better my catalog than I do. So if y'all, so y'all can share that if you know better videos that talk about the informed field, and uh, or just go to my We Immortals playlist. Got a whole bunch of those videos. Oh, I did do a post, Shiva, Shiva Shampoo, you're right. <clears throat> I did do a short post on that recently. <clears throat> no, the truth ignored, no. I would not change anything. If I could go back in time and stop yourself from ever going to prison, would you? No, no. Uh, it's, there is, I, I mean, if, it, if I wasn't if I wasn't on this mission to to uh, finish Chronicon, I really wouldn't find any value in life. I'm, I'm really bored with life. I'm not, I'm not. There's nothing really that really excites me anymore. It's uh, I, I, I've explained this. I've explained this in, in some other videos where I got real heart to heart. Uh, I mean, there was for a, even for a while there, I was I was ready to check out. I was ready to go. I'm not scared of death at all. 
Yeah, you don't you don't go 90 miles an hour through Texas back roads with no helmet on and, and be scared. You're not accused of being fearful. I just don't I just don't care. So I have an agenda and I know I'm not going anywhere until it's finished. But other than that, no. Yeah, die hold. <clears throat> I've already got a, I just had a recent post about about uh Voigt and the Die Hold Foundation. Uh, you might before you before you ever tell anybody else that Archaic supports the Diehold Foundation, you need to watch my video, please. Yeah, there's a. I'm not on board with with just because they conclude that 2046 is the date of the next poll shift, which I which I have a 46 video playlist that also says the same thing. Uh, I can't. I can't associate myself to their conclusion and how they derive that material. And there are reasons for that. Oh uh, yeah. I'm not, please don't link the archaics material to theirs. Well, we're, 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 we are existing in totally different worlds when it, when it comes to how that material was derived, how, how that conclusion was made. Because uh, I'm going to tell you now, I can produce so many different data sets and I don't have to, they're already in the playlist and in my published books, but, but, uh, yeah, we're going to leave that alone. We could use Facebook to meet up. I agree with that. Gnosis rising. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Crazy Mom 123, whatever happens to people who commit suicide? I've gone into great detail in some of my live videos about suicide, and I mean that because especially like in my video on uh, the origin of demons, the uh, and I'm not implying that suicide, suicide victims uh, become demons, but in that video, I'm explaining that death is not what we think it is, that uh, and the origin of demons is, is because these people have, have basically exited their avatar by a unconventional way. Now, suicide is no different than regular death and murder. It's not. Therefore, the cycle, the sim cycle is not broken. People who die of suicide come right back as, uh, into a, as another avatar. And and I'm going to tell you, this, this is going to creep some of y'all out. I know it's going to creep some of you out. If you were to just write down on a piece of paper especially those of you in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, if you were just to write down on a piece of paper every person that you remember, friends and family, in your, lo in your local life that passed away, and then on one sheet of paper and put the general date, and then write down on a separate column all the people in your life that were born on a certain date and then compare the two, it's going to creep you out. So that's if you're paying attention all these years, if you're able to put that together. I don't know anything about channeling. I hear about it. I hear people tell me. I even had somebody who has a really successful YouTube channel uh, contact me and wanted to do a podcast, and I just had to decline. I'm just... Uh, it's way outside the scope of the archaics output. And it's, it's so far removed from anything I understand or know that I just, I don't know anything about channeling at all. I'm sorry. Lots of alphabetic peeps in the chat. You know what? I got, I need, I need to go back in there without, well, with, uh, with alphabetic. It's been a while. I'm, I'm starting to start. I'm starting to go back in to my podcast. Oh, I'll be talking with Mac, Max Egan. Man, is it Egan or Eigen? But but I'll be talking with Max on Sunday. Max and I are going to have a chat. We're going to record a chat. I like Max. Uh, I didn't see any of his YouTube videos. I don't know if I... Thank you, Matthew Clark. Uh, I couldn't see any, any of his... Uh, uh, I, I couldn't see any of his YouTube videos. I can't find them like old stuff that other people put out, but I did find a, a, another platform he's on and he's got some good videos on there. I listened to him. He's just walking through the park. It looks like, 
like a tropical area. He's just walking through, just talking, making some good points. So, uh, Matthew Clark, I love your work. Thank you, man. Can you explain the history of Freemasons and their role in the world today and if they have a connection to Enoch? Okay. It's a good question. Hmm. All right. We have to go back. We're going to have to go back to about 25 centuries ago when the build, when the builder craft was organizing the materials of the Orphic, Orphic temples, the Orphic faith, ancient Greece, very Christian in tone, the Orphic faith, and then the Delphic faith. The builder, the builders were a very ancient order that had come out of Phoenicia. I'm not going to go beyond that, but you can pretty much make the connections. They came straight out of that area of the world. Now, the the builders, the builders were an offshoot of basically the ship, the shipping guilds, the the old mariner trade empires. Well, because they were necessary everywhere, new colonies were put up. The, the, the men of the craft, all the artisans, not just stonemasons, but all the artisans and the men of the craft would, would disembark and uh, the ships would leave to go get provisions, provender, all that stuff, and they would come back. And these different guilds worked together. But in working together, they were also involved in all kinds of religious and secret society type stuff. But where it really took off was when there was a merging with the archer guilds. The, the archer guilds and all these different all these different trade trade guilds had come together and basically formed a loosely knit confederation of of elitists of men and they recognized early on that there was a problem and this problem had to do with another ethnicity so another group that kept infiltrating their business kept infiltrating their trade kept infiltrate and this other group always had always had small communities and representatives everywhere and seemed to get information out faster than they could and this was a problem through the mediterranean world and uh, the way they fought back is they, they used the oracles because the oracles of Dodona and Delphi, and there's like five other oracles, those were actually intelligence operations in the ancient world. Today, we look back and think that the ancient Greek world was uh, more primitive uh, in their intellect, and they were not. People would go to the the Delphic Oracle, and they would they would basically give information because it was supposed to be an area of sanctity, and they would literally pay to give intelligence to the to the priests and to the custodians, and they would take it to to the Delphic priestess, and she would do her omens and oracles and her little smoke snake dancing and all that with a python and pr produce information. But often the information that people bought was information that had been gleaned from other people because everybody who went into the, the Sanctum Sanctorum were questioned by scribes and they wrote down the answers. And they said that the oracle needed this data to, 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 to take it to the gods to get the whole picture. But what it was was an intelligence operation. And they were recording a massive amount of data from all these thousands of visitants to all these oracles. And the oracles themselves were exchanging this data that they, had, they got with the other oracles. And the oracles themselves were exchanging data with the trade, the archer guilds, and, and, and the and the and the, and the trade craft. Freemasonry and masonry came out of this environment. It came with a massive corpus of beliefs and all, and all. And one of those beliefs, yes, was Enoch. Well, another one of those beliefs was uh, that Enoch built the Great Pyramid. It's the same thing that the Egyptian Coptic texts say about Surid. And Surid has the exact same history Enoch did in the book of Jasher. They parallel each other perfectly, even ruling over the exact same amount of 130 provinces. So it's a uh, the builder craft was basically started as an elite group to, to better insulate themselves from the many penetrations that were coming from this other group. You know this other group. I don't have to say them. I don't have to, I don't have to tell you who they are today because the same thing unfolded in 1902. There are two separate groups. The group I'm talking about, 
for somehow has taken over and runs the 20th century. So uh, this happened way back then. Well, there was a dynamic change after the Bar Kokhba Rebellion. When the Bar Kokhba Rebellion uh, took off, Rome had solidified its stance against the Jewish people and decided, hey, you know what? We can't have them in our provinces anymore. We can't even have them here. Every single time we allow these people to govern themselves, they rebel against us, They, they and, and they're deeply involved in our financial affairs, and they're siphoning money away from the empire. So they ousted them. They, they raised Jerusalem to the ground again. They did it in AD 70, and they did it again in AD 135. But the time they did it in AD 135, this time, the Jews were prepared. They had already infiltrated the builder craft. They had already, they had already got their feelers in this, this fraternal benefit society of the enemy, which were basically the white Europeans. And right after the Bar Kokhba rebellion, the, basically the, the, uh, these people went into full overdrive to infiltrate every element they could. It took them centuries to finally take it over. But they did. there was a bifurcated attack. Not only did they fully infiltrate Freemasonry, but they developed what full, full Freemasonry is today. But at the exact same time, it took them centuries to finally overcome and infiltrate the Vatican. Because for a long time, the popes were very anti-Semitic. For a long time, the popes were always talking about the Jews and what they're doing and all this. But, but after a while, it, after, after several centuries, almost at the exact same time that Freemasonry developed and then splintered off into other Jewish controlled factions called Rosicrucianism and, and uh, the foresters, the elks, the moose, the lions, well, they, they took the Vatican as well. And that's why you see popes wearing that little hat a lot. It's, it's basically an outward expression. It's code. Uh, it's basically flying in the face of everybody because most people don't even make the connection. So this is why Lionel Rothschild uh, is always sp spoken highly of by the Vatican, why the seal of the Rothschilds is found in Rome. So anyway, I hope that answers your question. Yes. Uh, if you want more information on the belief systems of the Freemasonries and how they believe that Enoch built the Great Pyramid and that Abraham visited the Great Pyramid when it was first discovered after the flood, if you want more information, there are original Freemason documents from three and four hundred years ago called the Wood Manuscript, and another one is called the Inigo Jones document. These are original Freemason doc. You also need to read the original Freemasonic Constitution. It has all that in there. I was in there. I told you guys I'm pretty well read. I'm pretty well read. I'm uh, and once I once I read something and, and I resonate with it, I memorize it. Oh, uh, Mary Austin, Jason, can AIX enter our dreams? and insert old programming to make us fall back into bad patterns. Okay, I have all I have often theorized and I've never been I've never been shy about telling you guys that the weakest we can ever be is when we're in REM sleep. Because when we're in REM sleep, the actual avatar has been disengaged from the spirit. We are gone. We are absolutely gone. And now REM, rapid eye movement, that is AIX going in there trying to see, trying to predict our next outcomes, well, what we're going to do, what we're doing. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a information dump, but it's also data retrieval going on at the exact same time. So, yeah, that's that's when we're most vulnerable, and I believe too that's when that's when we we have our reinforcement programming in installed because. I mean, every most most of the time, you live through a day that was very, very similar in nature to the day you lived through before. And the only break in that pattern was sleep. Hmm. GoPro, Jason. Camera for the bike. GoPro. It's called GoPro? A camera called GoPro? It's something I can wear? I'm a, I'm a Google. As soon as I get off this, I'm a, I got to Google a couple things because uh, 
I need to find some software that Gary Warmer damn and I can go live on with YouTube because apparently Zoom ain't gonna do it. If we have any problems going live in the morning, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna record because I got some deep stuff to reveal. I know Gary's been doing his homework too, so uh, he's gonna tell some things that happened in 1890. So I'm a uh, I just I might I might have to just pre-record that and by 10 a.m. 11 a.m. I'll I'll put it on YouTube. Michelle, that's a good question. What does it mean if you don't remember your dreams? It means you're just like me because I don't remember them. I've only I only remember. From my childhood, I had the same dream three times, and I did a video about it. And uh, I, other than that, I don't. I don't. When I go to sleep, I wake up. It's over with. There's nothing in between. I don't remember any dreams. Uh, it's been years since I dreamed. Now I do remember taking a nap a few years ago, and I woke up uh, uh, suddenly. And when I woke up, there was something on my mind. There was something there. I remember vaguely that I was doing something. So I was dreaming. I'm not saying I don't dream. I'm saying that I have no recollection of my dreams when I wake up. None. Susan Mann, I have a lot of videos, my live presentations and podcasts discussing AIX. And you have to understand it's a lot of that is not supported by data sets. They're, those, those are conclusions based off everything that I've accepted is true. But Oh, uh, yeah. AIX, AIX is not a part of the original construct. The simulacrum is absolutely pure. It's not good. It's not evil. It's very reactive medium, but it's it's not. It has no it has no biases. It has no agenda. The agenda programming was all put in by AIX. AIX is the agenda programming. It's the enemy. It's the adversary. I've also postulated in the past that AIX may have been necessary only to make this entire experience more real. GoPro makes all kinds of mounts and attachments. Look forward to those videos. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Brandon. GoPro. I'll, I'll see this again. I need to write it down because after every video, I'll review the comments. Fearless Vic. I'm looking for some. Let's see. Hmm. Damn, my, my chat just leapt. I don't know what happened. I must be so far behind. I must be so far, so far behind in the chat. I need some questions in all caps, guys, so I can see them. Otherwise, I think y'all are just talking to each other. Oh, and my chat did jump. I just made it back to that one comment now about GoPro. And my chat must have leapt all the way out. Hmm. Thank you, Swedish Fish. Hell of a name. Hmm. I don't, I don't really pay attention to the significance of any numbers. I don't. Somebody's asking me about 7-Eleven. I don't. I don't. Is vapor canopy a chi environment? I don't know what a chi environment is. That's not my, that's not my database, my brother. Sounds, it sounds oriental.
insomnia. That's a good one because insomnia would do to the central nervous system almost exactly what mind-altering drugs or fasting would do. Fasting is the worst for, for the central nervous system. Uh, you have to understand, the central nervous system is a filter. It's a, it's a filter that keeps you from being aware on multiple levels of many of the things that are going on around you, but it actually allows you to focus. So it's a double-edged sword. But if you fast for long periods of time, you are injuring the avatar. The avatar goes through a period where it's beginning to strangle individual systems and stop them from uh, being able to uh, operate optimally. And one of them that, 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 that begins to begins to get hurt first before the heart, before the muscles atrophy, before you, before you have a uh, vision loss or, or anything like that. One of the first things is the central nervous system. It's the most fragile. And, uh, once you start starving the body, the central nervous system loses the ability to, to basically have the power it normally has to be a filtration system. And this is why people who fast have these visions. This is why they go through this, this uh, uh, internal experience. They become more and more spiritual as they're, as they're being loosened from their avatar. So yeah, it's, I, I've talked a lot about that in the past. Same thing with insomnia. Stay up for days and days and days and days. It's going to affect your central nervous system. It's going to make you hallucinate. This is why meth heads are going around talking to people that ain't there all the time. Yeah, we have meth heads all over Texas. With a vapor canopy. Jahara Lee. Hey, how you doing, Jahara? Jahara. Oh my God, I just lost it. See, I must be so far behind. My my whole chat just takes off and, and skips. But I saw her question. Jahara Lee out of California asked me about the vapor canopy. Will it suddenly appear or be gradual? Well, that's a good question. All right. The vapor canopy is caused by, by an, an immense amount of volcanism. Now, this it's also this volcanism causes two things. One of them, it the dust veil that it creates and blankets the atmosphere at the same time as Phoenix fallout blankets the atmosphere with this red fine dust, this weird, unusual organic material. So as all this is going on, we have a uh, um hi boo, <laughs> hi Jara. So the vapor canopy takes volcanism. I don't believe it's instantaneous. It's probably going to take several weeks of building. And then just as soon as it hits its little scene curve, then all of a sudden within days it thickens and it solidifies. And the vapor canopy is there. Now, what the vapor canopy does is what's interesting, not what it is. What it does is trap that ambient radiation and enriched oxygen. All these volcanoes are spewing this out. And I've showed you guys and told you many times, and it's also in my published books, about the two scientists that grew two inches when they were exposed to ambient radiation from the volcano in the French Caribbean in 1902. Same thing we find in the, in the archaeological record. Animals, reptiles, fish, everything was gigantic sizes. Mushrooms, 8 to 14 feet tall. Have trees, 400 feet high. Everything, because under the vapor canopy, everything is enjoying this carbon dioxide, oxygen enriched, uh, 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 basically, atmosphere. This The atmospheric pressure has been increased. The solar UV, UV light is gone. Now it's a dark purple light, but everything grows to astonishing sizes. And the dark purple light is even better for photosynthesis than the yellow uh, light that we get from the sun today. This has been shown and proven modern times in a biosphere in Texas. So I show all that in prior videos. So good question, Jahara. It will take some weeks or maybe some months for the full effects of the vapor canopy to take effect because this event will occur in May, in mid-May of 2040. By November 2040, the effects of the vapor canopy are going to be noticed. And this is what Second Esdras prophecies are about. All the changes that are going to come into the human body during the apocalypse. All these 
all these things, the return of hero. This is what all these ancient legends were talking about, the age of heroes before the flood, then the age of heroes that came back after the flood, and then the great cataclysm that destroyed the old Bronze Age in 1687 BC, known as the Ogygian Deluge. That Right after that, there was a mini vapor canopy, and there was a new, according to Hesiod, a new age of heroes. A real small one tucked, in, tucked into his narrative because that vapor canopy had, had basically altered the human genome. People were growing to astonishing sizes. They were growing very, very strong and powerful. And in females, the it unlocked actual DNA potentialities and DNA sequences that had been inactivated when there was no vapor canopy. Under the vapor canopy, those DNA, the latent DNA, what we call junk DNA, was now activated. And it gave females a, a spiritual, mental, telepathic edge over males. But it gave males astonishing prowess. So, yeah, that's, vapor canopies are awesome. You're still young, Jahara. You'll still look young when the when the vapor canopy hits. Matthew May, my buddy, man, you need to come visit me, man. Or wherever you're at, I'll come and get you. Say, since, since I've seen you a few, uh, three, four months ago, man, I missed you, bro. I've missed every single phone call, man. I'm sorry, Matt. Matthew May, I'm so glad to see you in the chat. While I started this video, I looked at my phone and I saw your text. I said, oh, he's back in town. So, yeah, man. I'm all looking forward to talking to you, Matt. Man, I miss you, bud. Oh, and Matt, since last time you were here, oh, my book collection has grown exponentially. Mm -hmm. Matt's, Matt's been in the studio with me before. Jason, you're the bestest. Ha <laughs> ha, stop it. Oh, that's Jahara, too. Damn, Christine, you fasted for 10 days? Wow. That's crazy long time. I don't know anything about shadow people. Vlad. Vlad, I just did a video about you. Vlad the Impaler. Is Chronicon something I can give to future generations? Of course you can. I provide it in thumb drives. I provide it on Gumroad as downloads. There's a lot of people who have sent me emails showing me all the proud pictures of their Chronicon already put in plastic binders, three ring binders, elaborate artistic cover pages. I'm like, man, you guys put me to shame. My Chronicon don't look nothing, doesn't look anything like that. Somebody asked me about the Arantia book. Okay, Michael Beekman, <clears throat> I don't really have an opinion about it because I only made it through the first 200 pages. Uh, I still I still had to go through like 670 pages to finish the book and I couldn't do it. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to tell you that it doesn't have value. I'm not going because the book was very deep, but the problem is is I can't I can't invest that amount of time into a text that doesn't give me a single supporting reference. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. The book, the book was very interesting, but you know what? The Simpsons are interesting to me sometimes. What do you think about ghost and ghost activity? That would be Equaluit, Equaluit. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but please go watch my video on the origin of demons because that, it, it discusses poltergeists and, and ghosts and all that. Yeah, it's, it, it's a deep video. As a matter of fact, I think it's the only video that I have that I say mature audiences only. I may have a second video that says that. I think the Vlad, Vlad the Impaler video also said that, based off the gruesome violence that I was describing in that video. Uh, Joshua Carpenter, I get up early in the morning. 
and I, I take care of administrative stuff in the morning. Like I, I try to knock out more emails, try to knock out uh, uh, my messages on, I'm in the comment section on YouTube. Uh, I try to, I've been, I've been distracted a lot behind uh, thumb drive orders and all that, but I have help now. So, but yeah, I'm not going to sit at my computer all day long because uh, the human body wasn't designed for this. And I'm not going to allow myself to do it either. I'm going to get physically active. I'm going to work on my property. I'm going to do fencing. I got five dogs. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to build things on my property. Uh, I'm going to work on this building. Uh, you know what? I ought to do a video just walking through the property and walking the building just to show you how much labor went into all these projects. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. I don't know who Max Freedom is. I love black coffee. I love black coffee. And I know that I'm hot as hell and I'm getting hungry. And this video was supposed to start at six, but Gary and I had all kinds of technical difficulties. I don't know what time it is now. Oh, it's not nine, nine o'clock. Okay. So I've been doing this for three hours. I haven't been on y'all. I haven't been on with you guys for three hours, but I've been sitting at this computer longer than three hours trying to figure out these technical things with Gary. So yeah, that didn't work out. So I really appreciate your guys' donations today. I appreciate you guys joining me, even though I was 30 minutes late from when I told you I was going to come on. But I'm going to do the video with Gary tomorrow. I'm excited about it because we got some things to talk about the 1890, 1890 to 1902. And, uh, uh, yeah, I see somebody's waiting for their super pack. Well, I'm pretty sure you're going to get it any day. I mailed a bunch of them out. If you read every day, for three or four hours a day, it would still take you over six months to read that damn super pack. Let's see. Probably longer than that. All right, guys, I'm running out of gas. I'm running out of juice. I'm sweaty. I'm hot. I want to eat. Give me something to drink. It's already 9 p.m. here in Texas. I'm going to close this video. I love you guys. A thousand people listening to me. I really appreciate your attendance. But look out for that video tomorrow because we're going to be talking about some deep stuff, me and Gary Warmerdam. And for the, with that, I'm going to check out. And Matthew May, you better call me. <laughs>